What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video needs no introduction. You've guessed it from the title, we are making Guinness bagels. If you liked today's video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and also don't forget to hit subscribe, which is that big red button down below so that you don't miss any more of my videos. Now let's jump into the recipe. You will need 500 grams of strong flour, 15 grams of dark brown sugar and five grams or one teaspoon of salt about two tablespoons of molasses. That is one tablespoon for your bagel dough and one tablespoon for the water that we're going to boil the bagels in. All will become clear. One packet or seven grams of instant dry yeast. You need your toppings. Today I'm going for pumpkin seeds and poppy seeds, but that is totally up to you. And lastly, one teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, also known confusingly as bread soda or baking soda to add to our boiling water. The first thing we are going to do is mix up all of our dry ingredients. Molasses is really, really tricky and sticky to work with. And so I find that giving it a really good whisk through before you add your wet ingredients into your dry ingredients really helps get everything nicely incorporated. Whisk, 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 and that looks about right. So I'm going to start adding the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients a little bit at a time and just get stuck in there with your hands. There is no science to this to get the mixture to come together into a dough. It does take a little while to come together, so be patient and keep on mixing and keep on adding your liquid. Now, so once you have all of that liquid added in, you'll notice that you do have quite a sticky dough. And if you are new to bread making, in general, this might be a little bit scary. You're thinking, oh my God, I've gone way too far with this. How do I recover? But I promise this is exactly how this dough is meant to go. It's meant to be really sticky. And that is the beauty of kneading, which is the process of developing the gluten in the flour that gives bread its really nice elasticity. Kneading can take anywhere from five to 20 minutes, depending on your technique. I don't have any particular method, I just do whatever feels right. Pushing into the dough and pulling it back over on itself, turning it around, even using the slapping method, which I know that a lot of people find intimidating, but honestly, it's just great crack. As you continue to knead the dough, you'll notice it starts to become less and less sticky. It starts to keep its shape more, it starts to come together into more of a round and conformed ball of dough, exactly like you would expect it to look. Once you have reached that point and you're happy, cover and leave to prove in a warm place for about two hours until the dough is about double in size. Okay, so after that two hours, you can see that the dough has literally doubled in size. This is exactly what we want. And the first thing I'm going to do is just knock the air back. Literally just put your hands into the dough and give it a good squeeze and feel around. Our next stage is to portion out the dough into 80 gram pieces. And what we want to do is work with these individual portions of dough to roll them into balls. Now there is a technique for this, which I have shown in more detail in my gluten-free donut video, but essentially all you're doing is taking that portion of dough into the palm of your hand, creating a claw shape and working the dough forwards and backwards in a circular motion between the palm of your hand and your fingers until you form a nice smooth ball. Once we have our 10 portions of dough all rolled out, we're going to leave them to prove on the countertop for another half an hour. Ideally, you'd want to cover them. Next, we are going to shape the bagels into that standard bagel shape that we're all so used to seeing. So literally all we're going to do is use our fingers to create a hole in each ball of dough. And while you're shaping your bagels, you can have a large pot of water on the hob heating up to boiling point. Once your water is boiling, and I apologize, this was extremely hard to film because of all the steam, but we will do our best. You're going to add in the tablespoon of molasses that you've kept from the start, which gives your bagel an extra sweetness, and your bicarbonate of soda. This is what gives the bagel that really nice and shiny texture. You might be surprised that you have to boil bagels before you bake them, and it is a little bit unusual, but that is what makes bagels so special. So you're going to dunk your bagels two or three at a time, depending on the size of your pan, into the water, and you're going to boil them for 30 to 40 seconds on each side. While your bagels are on to boil, you can preheat your oven to 200 degrees Celsius in a fan oven. While your bagels are still warm and a little bit tacky from boiling, 
dump them into the toppings that you've chosen, cover them nicely and place on a baking tray. Give them enough space because they will puff up slightly. Keep an eye on them in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes and once they're nicely golden brown, remove from the oven and cool on a wire rack. They go amazingly well with traditional bagel toppings like avocado and cream cheese. They're the perfect balance between savory and sweet and that punch of Guinness really comes through. And that is it guys, delicious and simple Guinness bagels. If you liked today's recipe, please do give it a big thumbs up. It helps me out massively. Hit subscribe and turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss any more of my future uploads. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you back on my channel very, very soon. Bye.